We're here at the Bend Motorsport Park in South Australia with this, the eighth generation Porsche 911. And you can be forgiven for thinking that it doesn't look that different to the seventh generation car. But beneath that evolutionary styling, a lot has changed. We'll start with the engine. It's a three liter twin turbo unit. This is the Carrera S, which is the only model being imported at the moment. And it's got 331 kilowatts and 530 Newton meters of torque. So it is crushingly powerful. That is as powerful as the old 959. And it's fast too. If you choose the 4S, it'll accelerate faster than an old 997 GT2. It's that quick. So you get a choice between Carrera S, which is a rear wheel drive car, or the Carrera 4S, which directs drive to all four wheels. The first car, 265 grand, the second, 281 one. And they're available very shortly in Australia. But it's a fascinating car. The body in white of this car, the body and chassis, is lighter than before. It's almost all aluminium, whereas the old car was 60% steel. The underpinnings and the crash structures of this car and the bits that really count are 30% steel. Almost everything you can see on the outside is aluminium. They've made quite a few changes. It's a longer, wider, taller car. It's 20 inch wheels at the front, 21s at the rear, so they can have staggered rubber on it. And some of the styling changes are quite neat as well. These headlights have been designed to replicate the look of the old 964, the relationship with the wheel. And you've got this lovely scoop in the bonnet that comes from the old G series 911. If we move around towards the back, you'll notice that the badging has been cleaned up quite considerably. The old 991 did look like a bit of a bitzer of badges at the back. And there's also this fluted deck. This spoiler can raise up in three different positions because the intercoolers have moved and it can feed the air more cleanly to those intercoolers. And it's wide as well. There's only the wide body option available in this car because that's what Porsche owners wanted. And when you sit behind one of these cars on the road, it looks low and hunkered and mean. If the badges were off it and somebody told you that this was the new Porsche 911 Turbo, you'd believe them. Let's have a look inside. The interior has been thoroughly updated. There's still the classic five clock binnacle with an analog rev counter in the middle and then these digital dials on either side. And there's been some bits that have been purloined from other Porsche models like this architecture here is very Panamera, but instead of being button heavy on this center stack, we just got these neat piano keys up here. These two you can assign yourself. The gear selector is a little bit odd. Um, all of the cars initially have an eight speed PDK transmission and you just pop that back and it sits into drive. Similar sort of thing for the ignition. You just turn that and it's got that same nice knurled metal feel. It feels very premium. A manual option will be along later. That will be a seven speed manual using much the same transmission casing as the PDK. But I really like what they've done with this interior. They've kept it very, very clean and have tried to replicate the longitudinal lines of the original car to give an impression of width. It feels like a big car when you first sit in it. There's another eight millimeters of headroom up top, even in this car that's got a sunroof. You know, I'm 6'4 and I can sit in this car absolutely comfortably. Your bum is right on the deck, which is absolutely as it should be in a 911. Steering wheel is lovely. You've got this beautiful little drive mode Manatino switch here. And the packaging of the vehicle is better. The rear seats are better. The front up the front is bigger if you want to get more stuff in there. It's just generally really, really well done. And the quality has stepped up a notch. And that's what Porsche 911 owners are after. But when you drive the car, you find that it shrinks around you nicely, which is what you're after. So let's take it out on the track and see what it can do. Right, you'll probably have to excuse me if I'm not setting any outright lap records because this is my first time at the Bend Motorsport Park and uh, it's a bit of an introduction. The car I'm in here is a Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. So we've got all wheel drive and it's a hell of a thing. This thing has lapped the Nürburgring in seven minutes, 25 seconds. And that's as fast as the 991 GT3. So it's a weapon. And on this track, listen to that. Porsche has worked to 
improve the acoustics of this car with the turbocharged engine, you're always gonna get a degree of muting of the engine note, but I reckon they've got that beautiful breathy flat six sound back. Listen to that on downshift. This is a triple apex right-hander and it is just something else. And on this corner, huge slug of curb and on the brakes. It's really, really responsive on the brakes. Porsche have taken technology from their hybrid cars, and got electronic actuation for the brakes. So the moment you step off the throttle sharply, it pre-primes the brake and the response is absolutely instant. The steering on this car is also a lot sharper than the old 991. And the throttle response is also much, much quicker. That's largely due to the engine work that Porsche have done. Although the engine, you might think it's much the same that has gone before, the valve train has changed quite dramatically. It now has this asynchronous valve actuation. And the valve actuation is no longer vacuum operated. That's all done electronically. So slowly but surely, Porsche are purloining technology from some of the other models in its range, the 3.6 V6 and the hybrid cars and introducing it to 911. And that's pretty smart. <laughs> the transmission in this car is also pretty interesting. It's an eight speed PDK and Porsche have introduced a lower first gear and a longer eighth gear. So the spread of gears is much, much wider than before. Uh, a lot of that is to do with efficiency. But the casing for the transmission has also been engineered with a certain amount of future proofing in mind. And they're gonna put an integrated starter generator into that in the fullness of time and make it a very, very mild hybrid. But in the meantime, just listen to that. The noise pathways through this car have been extensively re-engineered. Um, one of the big changes to this car is at the back, the whole back of this car is different. Whereas the old 911 had a, a subframe that the engine was mounted onto, this one now mounts off the cylinder heads. And getting the mounts out wider means that the engine has less mechanical advantage when it's moving around. And if the engine is stiffer, that means it's not moving under pitch and load. When you do a launch control start, for example, if the engine is absolutely rigid. It's not moving anywhere. There's no, no moment of inertia there. And that's allowed Porsche a certain amount of freedom to make the ride softer when it needs to be with the adaptive dampers and stiffer when it needs to be and also introduce a certain amount of that fantastic noise into the car. I'm trying to think what I don't like about this car in terms of dynamics and there's not a lot. It is a brilliant, brilliant car. The old 991 was a good car but this is just those few degrees sharper again um, a lot of changes have gone into it. Tiny little 1% changes to improve the 992. It really, really shows on the brakes. Braking stability is excellent. <laughs> a little bit enthusiastic there, ain't right? drive the damn thing. <laughs> it's a super, 
super low grip surface here at the bend. And while that means your tyres are going to last forever, it also means that once the car starts sliding, it keeps sliding. <laughs> Some of these corners, the sight lines are very, very strange and it's easy to jump in on the throttle too early. This corner is a, is a monster. You get your braking done in a straight line and just pitch it in and it looks like you're just driving. But the sky... I'm going to cool the car down now. Bring it back into the uh, pit lane in one piece. But what an achievement from Porsche. This car moves the game forward quite significantly over 991. You wouldn't know it to look at it because it looks so similar to the old car. But Porsche have just done the old Team Sky thing of incremental improvements on the car. Just tiny gains. Everything is a little 1% gain and those 1% add up to something absolutely significant. We've been driving it out on the road earlier and the one thing that you really, really do notice over the old car is the increased compliance in ride. The Bilstein dampers are around 30% more compliant at the front axle, 28% more compliant at the rear. It just makes the thing a more civilised and usable car. And that's, that's always been the thing about a 911. You buy it because you want to use it. Mission accomplished then. Bravo Porsche. Now let's have a GT3.